Hey everybody, I thought it'd be really fun to make some videos as I go out into the field. So it's kind of like you're joining me out in the field as I'm looking for bees. Today, I wanna to talk about a trip I just recently took in searching for bees in Bears Ears National Monument. So I did this trip last week. It's early spring, it's still pretty cold, but it's warming up and bees are starting to come out. I wanted to kind of do a scouting trip to look for bees in this area in southeastern Utah that used to be part of the Bears Ears National Monument. So let me give you a little background here. The Obama administration actually established the Bears Ears National Monument down here in southeastern Utah. Uh, that was later changed and the size was dramatically reduced by the Trump administration. But I wanted to go look at this original boundaries and see what is known about bees in the Bears Ears National Monument. I did a little background research and it turns out not very many bees have been collected in those monument boundaries. In fact, only 40 species are known from that region. Now to give a little context here, 40 species compared to 660 bee species that are known from the Grand Staircase National Monument. So a lot of research still needs to be done in this Bears Ears region. So my family and I went down there, took a little bit to find a camp spot, but we found this nice spot up in the Pinion Juniper Woodland, kind of up on the high plateau. If you look north, you can see the Abajo Mountains. You see the Bears Ears Mesas right there where the monument gets its name. Nice place to set up camp. It was a little bit cold though. First day we set out to go look for some bees. And what we found is that up on that plateau, up on that mesa in the Pinion Juniper Woodland, it was pretty early in the year and there was not a lot of blooming plants yet. So we decided to take a hike down the canyon and see what's blooming at lower elevations. Unfortunately, a cold front came through that night, the night before we hiked down, and we were wearing our coats and it was pretty chilly. But as we went down into the canyon, we started noticing some plants were growing, like this is an astragalus plant. No blooms on it yet, but there's promise for this area. Down in the canyon, we did see some willows blooming, but again, it was such a cold morning that there was no pollinators on those willows. In fact, some of the seeps on the sides of the canyon walls, uh, we found icicles. So it was a pretty cold morning. In fact, it was just about 35 degrees, but as the sun came out and it started to warm things up, we started to see some insect activity. Specifically, we saw robber flies at first. This is a robber fly, they're predators. This one has attacked and is killing another robber fly. Down farther in the canyon, we saw some blooming astragalus plants, a kind of a big patch of them. So I spent some time here looking around for bees and I started seeing some male digger bees flying around. How do I know it's a male digger bee? Well, if we slow this video down, you can see the white face on this bee. Many bees, especially males, have white faces. So what you might not have noticed in this video is down on the ground right next to the flower, there is a little piece of pottery. In addition to being a biological and geological beautiful place, Bears Ears National Monument is home to a lot of Native American archeological sites. Really fun place to explore. On the second day, we had to head into town to replenish some groceries and get some gas. We went into Blanding, Utah at the city park. There were some dandelions blooming and I saw this little sweat bee on that dandelions. After Blanding, we headed down south to another part of the monument to explore some of those canyons. It was warming up and so we started seeing some lizard activity. This is Eurosaurus ornatus, the ornate tree lizard. How can you tell this lizard from other related species? Well, this row of scales along its back, it has different sizes of scales. It also has these kind of neat model patterns, but this ornate tree lizard, I often see these in washes in the desert, but not up on the plateaus or out in the flats. Pretty interesting. While I was taking a video of this lizard, my son yelled to me from down the trail and said, hey dad, there's some bees on this bush. So I went down and I saw this blooming bush that I wasn't really familiar with. I have this app on my phone that helped me identify it as round leaf buffalo berry. So I started looking at it and I did see several different pollinators like this Andrina, this is a male. I saw this nice hair streak butterfly. The male Andrina were looking around waiting for the females to come out. Male bees generally emerge a week or so before the females. And so we are so early in the season, it seems like I'm mostly seeing males on this bush. As I looked around a little bit more, I did see some other small bees. This is a small sweat bee in the genus Helictus. Other lizards that we found in the canyon included this one. This is Scoloporus magister, the desert spiny lizard. I also often see these in, in kind of riparian areas. They are a kind of fence lizard. They often sit on fence posts and they're known to eat bees and wasps. 
So after that, we went back to camp, started getting dinner ready, and we saw some tracks around our camp. So we set up a trap to see what was nearby. And we found this pack rat in our trap that had eaten some popcorn. So we let it go and went off in other areas to look for bees. Uh, the days were getting warmer, the cold front had gone past, and we found this willow patch that was had quite a few different bees on it. I saw mining bees and honey bees and sweat bees. I couldn't get very many good videos of them, but you'll see up here on the cliff behind the willows, there is uh, another archeological site. So on the way out from this canyon, I found another kind of lizard. This is Uda stansberryana, the common side blotch lizard. Why do you think it has that name? Well, it has that big splotch on its side. So because I couldn't get very many pictures of those bees on the willow because of the lighting, I collected some and brought them back. At night, I set up kind of my camera studio in the back of the truck. At night, it's cooler and the bees aren't as active. So I was able to get some good images of these bees. I have some mining bees here. I also found a few different kinds of sweat bees. So all in all, it was a pretty good day collecting and I was able to get some good pictures in my truck bed studio. On day four, we decided to explore the other side of the monument. So we drove quite a few miles up and around. This is now the west side of the Bears Ears Monument. We found another canyon to, to kind of explore. This canyon had really dramatic views, these nice uh, rocky canyon walls. I did find this, this shrub that was blooming with some digger bees on it. This is an Anthophora. This one is actually a female that is collecting some nectar, probably just emerged recently. And so the bees are starting to be active down there. Also in this canyon, we found another kind of fence lizard. This is Scoloporus undulatus, the Eastern fence lizard. You can tell it apart from the Western fence lizards because it has two blue spots under its throat when the Western fence lizard only has one big blue spot under the throat. Also, unlike Scoloporus magister, there is no black collar on that lizard. As we hiked down, we found this dead bat that was sitting on a rock. I don't know how it died, but I thought it was kind of interesting. I also found some male digger bees. This is an Anthophora male. You saw the white on the face. As we stopped to fill up our waters at a spring to filter some water, my son noticed on the side of this rock, this little bee nest. This is the nest of a Dianthidium. Dianthidium are known as resin bees. You can tell them from other related bees is because they have this really thin uh, lamella, this plate on the, the front of their shoulder there. So Dianthidium collect sap resin, as their name indicates, and they mix this sap with pebbles to make these, these nests on the sides of rocks or, or in other places. So that is a sap nest covered with pebbles. Inside there, there will be several different nest cells with pollen in there. We got back to camp. We noticed some other arthropods. This is a Jerusalem cricket, always fun to see out in the desert. And then the last day of our trip, um, we walked around a little bit more on the plateau to see what else we could see. The weather was getting pretty hot. It was about 75 degrees. All in all, we hiked about 40 miles on this trip and we found a lot of good areas that are gonna be great for future bee research all throughout the summer. So Bears Ears National Monument hasn't been very much research done for bees there, but it has a lot of potential to be a really rich place for bees. One interesting note is that of the five different bee species that I collected this week in Bears Ears National Monument, I compared these five species to the list of 40 species known from the region, and it turns out none of these five species were on that list. So even this preliminary scouting research that I did here collected five species that weren't previously recorded from the monument. I think this shows a lot of potential for future research. Hopefully I'll come back multiple times this year and I'll try to make a video each time I go out. And so you can follow along with the progress I'm making as I look at bees in Bears Ears National Monument. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.